Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about merging shapes in PowerPoint. I'm gonna show you a lot of the basic elements of merging shapes and the options available. And then I'm also gonna show you a few advanced things to play with. I'm gonna start out today with a blank canvas and I'm gonna draw some shapes on this canvas. For simplicity, I'm just gonna keep it to ovals. I'm gonna hold shift down and then replicate this shape. So this is what I want to work with, two circles. This will be my baseline. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate these and move them to the side and we're gonna start with the merging shapes. So with the two shapes selected, I'm gonna go up to Shape Format and Merge Shapes. First one we'll try is Union, see what that does. So Union is interesting because what that does is combine the two shapes and creates one shape and it's not grouped. I could go ahead and group these, but you would still see the outlines, and so this creates an all new shape. And with that shape, I have some options. I can save this as a picture, and that will allow me to save as either a JPEG, a PNG, or other files as well. You can save that, and then that will be a legitimate picture that you can insert into documents and other PowerPoint slides. So that's the union. I'm gonna go ahead and type this as union. Now let's keep exploring. I'm going to duplicate these slides, these images, and move them over to the side. Go to Shape Format, Merge Shapes, and this time let's try Combine. Let's see what Combine does. Now you can see that it's still one shape, just like the Union shape, but this time anything that was intercepting or overlapping, it deleted that. It created a gap, like a hole in it, and you can see as I hover over that it's just one shape, but it doesn't have that hole in it. So I'm going to label this as combine. Let's keep exploring. I'm going to duplicate these shapes. Move it down here, go up to shape format, merge shape, and let's see what fragment does. Fragment is interesting because it takes the regular shapes and as well as the overlapping component everywhere where it overlaps, it creates a seam. So in this case, it's three different elements. Duplicating again, let's move this down here. I'm going to go to Shape Format and Intersect. Now this is the exact opposite of Combine. It takes everywhere where the two shapes were overlapping and that's the only part that it keeps. Okay, the last one that we're going to explore, Shape Format, Merge Shapes, we're going to try Subtract. Now this takes the first one that I selected and it subtracts the second shape that I selected. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to duplicate this. This time I'm going to select the right one, and then I'll select the left one. Go up to Shape Format and Subtract, and you can see that it subtracts the second one. So the first element that you select is the one that it wants to keep. I'm going to create a new slide, and now we're going to have some fun creating an image. I'm going to start with a circle, and what I want to do is create a cloud icon. Those are pretty popular on the internet, so I'm going to duplicate this a few times and I'll resize these and play around with them a little bit. So I have the basic shape for the cloud. I'm going to add one more element, which is a rectangle, and I'm just going to slip that in right at the bottom. And now I have my components. When I highlight all of these, I can go to Shape and Union, and now I have my cloud shape. Let's have some fun with this. I'm going to insert a stock image. I'm going to look for a uh, cloud. And let's try and find something that looks fun. Perhaps this image down here at the bottom. I'm going to go to the selection pane, make sure that that's open. And I have my free form image. I'm going to put that right on top. And let's place this over some nice clouds and play around with our shape format options. I'm going to highlight the two shapes, go to shape format. Now union is not going to do much. It's just going to absorb the cloud because they're overlapping. Combine is going to subtract the cloud from the background element, which right now is not really something that I'm wanting to do. Intersect gives me an interesting option. And so that gives me a cloud icon with the clouds. But what I want to do right now is fragment just so that we can play around. In reality, I'd probably stick with intercept, but let's see what this does. I'm going to select the cloud and move it to the side. Now you can see I have that hole, the cutout of the cloud, and then I have the cloud over here. So with the cloud, I can go up and format the shape. 
I can add a picture border. Let's get the eyedropper tool and grab a maybe a bluish gray from on the screen. Then I'm going to add some weight to that and give it a 20 point weight, maybe a little less, maybe 15 or 10. That looks pretty fun. I'll delete this. And now I have an icon that I've created using shapes and then merging it with an image. Another spin on this is that you can merge images with text. So I'm going to go here and find a stock image. Here's a picture of peas. Let's start with this. I'm going to make this full screen and I'm going to add a text box on top of it. And this will say peas. I'm going to choose a font and size that's uh, maybe a bit thick. I'm going to bold it. I'll put it center and then make this large, maybe even 300. Might even go up to 350. All right, so now I have the image and the text. If I go to format shape, you can see that I have some options for merging the shapes. Now union's not going to do anything. It's going to make it disappear. Combine is interesting. It takes the P's font out of the image, and that's a very interesting effect. Fragment is also fun in that you can separate the letters from the shape, as well as intersect and subtract. I'm going to play around with intersect. Why this is interesting is if I double click on this and go into the crop option, you can see that the image is still there. And so I can move the image behind the letters and then it changes the letters. Now when I'm not cropping, I can move the letters on the screen. I can make them smaller or larger. And then when I go back to crop, then I can make sure I have exactly the part of the image that I want representing in the text. So this opens you up into a world of typography and creativity in PowerPoint. But the best way to really get a handle on the concept of shapes and merging and subtracting intersecting shapes is to go ahead and give it a try. Create some shapes on the slide and play around with the options.